Hey, this is Wes. In this video, we're gonna take a look at how we can create a custom rust effect using Smart Materials in Substance Painter. Our Smart Material is going to take a brush as input. So let's jump in and take a look at how we can make this effect. So here is the effect that we're gonna be creating. And if I use my paintbrush and I start to paint, you can see that we're getting some rust and some streaks here. Now, you'll notice that in my layer stack, I have this smart material and it's comprised of a few layers and several effects. Now, it looks more complex than it actually is. And we're going to step through this, you know, step by step. And you'll notice here that this particular effect has one single paint as an input. And again, as I choose a brush and I go in and start to paint, you can see here that I'm getting my overall effect. Now, I can actually change this effect depending on what type of alpha that I'm using, which is actually pretty cool. So what we're going to do now, like I said, is go through and build this up step by step. So let me jump over to this rust effect and turn that off. And what I'm going to do is create a new fill layer. And let's just place this on top of everything in the layer stack and collapse that folder. And for the material, I'm going to be working with color and roughness. Let's set a roughness value up fairly high. And then I'm going to come over here and choose some type of color. I want this to be a bit of a yellow, something like that will work. OK, so now I'm going to go in and mask this layer. So I'll create a black mask. And while I'm here, I'm going to add a paint effect. So now I have my paint effect. And again, if I just grab my brush and I go in, I start to paint. Now I'm getting this type of effect. Now, for this particular brush, it's pretty simple. If you take a look here, I have a lot of the jitter settings really controlling what the overall effect is going to do. And then here for the alpha, I'm just using our uh, brush maker Photoshop alpha. And if I scroll down, I'm just using this Kyle brush preset alpha 94. So again, this is all ships within Substance Painter. OK, so uh, this is going to serve as my entry point here into my effects. So what I like to do is just in all caps, I'll type in paint here. So let's go in and just paint something that we can use to kind of get started. So here in my scene, you can see that I've created a project just for testing this effect. And it's two planes and each plane has its own UV shells. And we'll talk more about the UV layout here in just a bit. But for now, I just wanted to let you know it's just a basic scene, two planes. Let's come in here towards the bottom and I'm just going to grab my little demo brush and just paint a stroke here. It's something that I can use to build up the effect. So now that I have this in place, what I'm going to do is add another effect on top of this. And we want to start with a blur. So here I'll come over to my add effects. I'm going to add a filter. And for the filter, I'm going to use here this blur slope. So while I was working through this effect for the tutorial, I ran into a bug in Substance Painter 8.2. I found that the blur slope filter has an intensity value, which is capped at one. And we need to be able to increase this up to a value of 32. So I talked to the dev team, let them know about this issue. So in the meantime, I have supplied a link that you can find in the description of this video to download a previous version of that slope blur so that you can continue the tutorial. So now that I have applied the blur slope, what I'm going to do is just come over here to the blending mode and we're going to set this to max and the intensity slider. I'm going to drag all the way to 32. Now here for the intensity divider, I want to set this to one and things are really starting to blow up here. But the core trick to this filter is going to be the source type. And we're going to set this to a custom noise. And then here under the image inputs, I'm going to click this button and you can see here I'm doing a search for position. And I'm going to use this position generator. And this is the key ingredient, I'll say, for this particular effect. So I will select the generator and this is going to produce the effect for us. Now, what's really great about this is you can see that under my image inputs, I'm using some baked images that was created using the Substance Painter Baker. So I have my position gradient and my world space normals. And what's really key about this is it will not matter the orientation of your UVs because this drips effect is being driven by that position baked map. So for example, now if I jump over here to my paint here input and I have my brush and I start to paint, you can see that I'm now getting these strokes. Now, really quick, just to demonstrate this, I'm going to jump over here to my 2D view. So now I'm looking at the actual UVs here for these two planes. And I have one plane and then this other UV shell, which is flipped 180 degrees. So if I'm painting here in my 2D view and I start to paint and then I come over to the other UV, you'll see that oh, it looks like it's upside down. But this is the position information doing its job. So, for example, now when I jump back to my 3D view, you can see that 
the position streaks are still falling downwards as I would expect them to be. I don't have to do any specific adjustments to the filter. Again, that position generator is doing all the work for me. Okay, so let's continue on with the process and I'm just gonna zoom in close and you can see that even though in my blur slope, I have the quality settled all the way to one, we still get a little bit of this stair stepping here in the interpolation. So what I'm gonna do next is come over here to my effects and I'm going to add yet another filter. And this time we're going to use a blur and I'm just going to blur this effect. So I don't wanna to go too crazy with it, just enough to kind of help get rid of some of that interpolation or that stair-stepping look. So that should work for me. And now I'm also going to add a levels on top of that and just play around with my levels until I can get an effect that I'm kind of looking for here. So I think something like this looks pretty cool. And again, you can just tweak this all day long. That's what's really awesome about, you know, Substance Painter and building up these effects. We call this the effect stack is we can just build up a complex effect. And of course, since this is a mask, just as a tip, you can always right click and choose to either copy this mask with all the layers or in here there is an option to create what we call a smart mask. So you can create a complex effect, save it and then reuse it in another project or in a different layer stack. All right, so that's gonna take care of our base smearing effect. And so what I wanna do now before I finish off this section is I want to anchor some of this information. So one of the pieces of information we wanna be able to call back later in our layer stack is this original kind of paint. This is gonna be where our rust is. So what I'll do is right above my paint here input, I will create here an anchor point and this is called a smear mask. Let's just call this, uh, let's just say uh, rust mask. Okay, now that means that at this level, this is the information I'm gonna be able to pull out with that anchor. This is the mask that I'm anchoring. Now on top of that, we add a blur, a slope, we add a blur, and then we add a levels. Now here is where I can go in and add another anchor point because I wanna save this level of my mask. And for this one, I'm gonna place it just above my blur. So select the blur, I'll come in here and add an anchor point. And this one, I will just go ahead and leave it as this smear mask. So we'll jump back to our material mode and here is the effect that we have so far. Now, the next phase is I wanna create some additional streaks that are going to be on the inside. So to do that, let's come over here to our layer stack. Let's create another fill layer and we'll call this inside streaks. And this one, I'm just gonna use color information and I'm gonna set this to maybe, and again, we'll probably tweak this a bit. Let's, let's just try something that has a little bit more red in it. So maybe something like that. And now I'm going to add a black mask here. Now here's where my anchor points are gonna come into play because I wanna be able to anchor this information. So what I can do is just grab a hold of this smear mask. So what I'll do is create a fill inside of my layer mask, and then here in the grayscale option, I'll click this button, jump to my anchor points tab, and then here I am going to grab what I have set here as this smear mask. And here you can see that it just highlights when I mouse over the actual anchor point here for my layer stack. So let's choose smear mask, and there we go. You can see that it starts to create this effect. So now I just have this exact same smear just layered over top. And then I'm going to just kind of clamp these values by just introducing a level. So here you'll see that I'll go in and just start to make a little bit of a change here. So let's just tweak this setting a little bit. It's just a matter of going in and kind of playing with this stuff, but it just adds a little bit of extra dimensionality here to this rust effect. And that's all I'm really trying to do. So you can see what I'm doing with this is just adding a little bit of a just inside effect here. And there we go, that's kind of what I'm looking for. I think that's gonna work. And again, I can always just jump back and keep tweaking and playing around with these values to get you know more of a finesse look. But for now, this is going to detail what I wanted to do here for that inside streaks. And again, you can see where that anchor point was able to get me that mask information, borrow it again to use in another layer. Moving on to the next level, I'm going to create a rust material. So once again, go to the top of my layer stack, let's create a fill and let's call this rust. Okay, so for this, I'm going to be using color information and height information and my, well, let's add roughness as well. And I'm just gonna increase this to a bit of a high value around 0.8 or so. 
So I have this image and I ran this through Substance Sampler just to create my tileable Rust image. And so I import that into Substance Painter. What I'm gonna do here, just something really, really simple. I'm just gonna left click, drag and drop this here to my base color input. And uh, you know what? I'm just gonna be lazy about it and I'm gonna create a little bit of height information. I'm just gonna grab the Rust tile and just throw that into the height channel. Even though it's color, it'll get converted to grayscale and make just some simple height information for me. I'm gonna tile this a lot so I'm not really worried about you know, creating an actual height map. I could have exported that from Sampler. Even better would have been to just create a Rust material from Sampler and then just send that right into Painter. But again, I just had the image. Okay, so with that said, let's set a tiling for this. And I'm gonna set this to, I think maybe a value of six. And if I need to change that, I, I can. And now on the layer itself, I'm going to add a levels. And here's where I can do just a little bit of color correction. So I think what I want to do is just kind of play around, just maybe desaturate this a little bit, just maybe give it a slight little bit more contrast, something like that. Now, if I want to uh, work with that height, uh, since I just converted that straight from the color, uh, one thing that I could do is just add another levels on top of this. And for the affected channel, I'm going to set this to height. And if I feel like, you know, this is a little bit too intense, I can then, you know, work around with my output black and white and just kind of lower this value. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Just take the output white and just, you know, lower it. I just want a slight hint of some texture there. Okay, so that's gonna work. And again, I can always go in and readjust these guys if I want to. However, what I need to do is of course, mask this layer. So now with the layer selected, we'll add a black mask. So here is where, again, we're gonna rely on those anchors that we created. So I have this rust mask, which is gonna give me the inside of the mask of my brush stroke. So what I'll do is come over here to my effects. Let's add a fill. Let's click the grayscale button, go to my anchor points. And here you can see that I'm going to be using here this rust mask, which is this one. You can see it's highlighting the one that I created. Let's use that guy. And here you can see it places that rust inside of the actual brush stroke. And now that I'm seeing this effect kind of composited into my stroke, what I can do is just come back and just play around with that, that levels effect. So maybe what I want to do is just slightly darken this a little bit uh, now that I see it in context. Okay, so I think that's going to work uh, for what I want to do. Now, like I said, if I alt left click here on the mask and quickly view the mask, I am going to want to anchor this information because I'm going to end up using this a little bit later on as well. So what I'll do is come over here to my effects and let's add an anchor point and just letting it use the name rust mask is going to be perfectly fine. Now, before we move on to the next step, I'm going to select my rust layer and maybe play around with this levels. I feel like I just need to maybe increase a little bit of a contrast here. So I think I want to get something a little bit more like this. OK, that's looking a little bit better. OK, so now next step, I want to be able to create an edge around this rust. So to do that, we'll come over here to our rust layer and let's just start with this. Let's duplicate it. So control D, I duplicate this layer and we'll call this uh, rust edges. And now I have this information here. So the base color is going to be fine. I think this height information, yeah, I'm gonna kill this. I don't wanna use that. And then I'm gonna drop over here to the actual material inputs and the height information that I have here now, I'm gonna kill this as well. So let's just click this X button to close that out. And then for the height slider itself, I'm gonna adjust this value up. And you can see that that's already starting to add a little bit of edge here. So we'll set this to around, you know, close to 0.5 or so. And let's continue to build up this effect because what we need to do, if we take a look at the mask, I'm just clicking uh, using alt left click to click to view my mask. What I want to be able to do here is I want to create an edge mask around here. So let's come into this layer. I'm going to get rid of this anchor point for now and I have this fill. And what I'm going to do is jump over here to my filters and let's start with a blur and then we'll blur this mask so far. OK, that's pretty good. Now we'll add an effect. We're going to grab our levels and then I'm going to click this invert button to invert the mask and then maybe just kind of clamp the values here a little bit to start. OK, so now we want to basically try to create this edge mask. So to do that, I'm going to take my fill that I have here, which is just my mask coming from rust and just multiply it back into itself. So a quick way to do this, I can hit control C, control V to copy any fill layer or any layer here in my uh, mask effect stack. Left click, drag and drop it here towards the top. 
and then just simply change the blending mode. And I'm going to set this to multiply. And there you go. I have an edge mask. Great little technique for creating edge masks. I can always drop back here to this blur and you can see that I can control this with this blur amount here. So I want to create something that looks like this. All right, so now I have the effect. It's a bit uniform along the edges. So I'm going to break this up with a noise. So here we will add a fill effect. Let's come to the grayscale button. And the one that I'm going to use is this Perlin noise. I've already searched for it here in my resources. So we'll grab Perlin noise and I'll set the tiling to 12. So now that this is set, I'm going to select my blending modes and let's set this here down to multiply. And lastly, I am going to use my effects and I'm going to add a levels here and then just kind of clamp these values a bit as well. So let's do something like maybe this here. And again, I can always readjust these if it isn't working like I want. OK, so I'll hit M on the keyboard to go to my material mode. And here we can start to see that we're getting some edging here. So if I take a look at my height information, let's just push this down maybe around 0.4 or so. And then, like I said, it's just a matter of coming in and adjusting these values uh, to get this to work like I want. So maybe it's something more like this here and I can adjust my blur. Maybe I need to back this off a little bit. That looks pretty good. This is what I'm looking for here, this little edge coming around the corners here. So, okay, this is kind of working more like I want. And like I said, I can always adjust all these values. So here you can see I'm just playing around, tweaking things to kind of get something like I want. Very subtle, but there we go. All right, I think that's going to work. So now I have my edge effect. And what I'll do is jump over here to my levels uh, for my color, and then I can even try to bring out this effect a little bit more by adjusting the the actual levels control. So what I might do is try to darken this slightly. So maybe try to go with something a little bit more like this, just on the edges. You can see that uh, that's gonna help me produce this effect a little bit more. Okay, there we go. We'll go with something like that. And one other thing that I forgot to adjust, let's come back over here to my mask. I have my Perlin noise. So I did adjust the tiling, but I also have the ability to change the noise itself. So if I play around with the balance of this, this allows me to just further kind of break up some of this effect here. So I should really try to look at this. You also have your noise parameters. So you can change things like scale. You can even play with the disorder, things like that. Uh, so now with that said, I could go back and just kind of further tweak some of this stuff out again. Uh, you know, it just takes time to go through and do that. And let's see, we'll get something that looks maybe a little bit more like that. OK, so with that said, we are now ready to move into the last stage of this effect. So for the final stage, we want to create some bubbling around the edges. So to do that, we are going to create a new fill layer and we'll call this edge bubbling. And then what we'll do is set the material input channels. I just want to use height information and I'm just going to give it a default value here around 0.45. Now I need to come into here and uh, create a mask and let's create a fill. And once again, we are just going to grab that anchor information that we've been working with here. So let's grab the grayscale tab. Let's come over to our anchor points and I'm going to use that rust mask. You can see here in that smear layer. So let's grab that guy and then alt left click on my mask so we can see what we're working with. So kind of following the same procedure as the rust edges, I want to create some type of edge mask, but we're going to do this one a little bit differently. So let's come over here and start by adding a filter. We're going to add a blur. So we'll blur this. Now, in this case, what I'm going to do is select the fill that contains the anchor for my rust mask. Control C, Control V, let's drag it towards the top. And instead of multiply, what we're gonna do this time is hit subtract. And that gives me this edge mask on the outside of my mask. And I can always jump over here to this blur and you can see increasing that blur intensity basically increases the overall spread of where the bubbling is gonna happen along the uh, outside edge of my mask. So we'll have that in place. Let's also drop a levels into here and play with this a little bit. You know, we'll probably come back and tweak this in a, in a moment, but let's just see what we can get with something like that. OK, so now that that's in place, we have just a, a basic edge uh, outside edge mask. Let's now break this up with some noise. So we're going to add a fill and then here in my grayscale, you can see I did a search for cells in the resources. And the first one I'm going to use is cells one. 
And we are going to maybe tile this, let's say, uh, I don't know, I'm going to try a value of six to start, and then we'll hit the multiply for the blending mode. And so here you can see I'm starting to get this little bubbling here around the edges. Now, uh, just for an extra effect here, what I'm going to do is just add another fill. Let's click the grayscale button. And this time I'm going to use cells three, which has more of like cracks in it. So let's try this uh, here. Uh, let's do a six on this one as well. And then we're going to multiply this guy down. And for this one, I'm going to maybe play around with the overall kind of balance here. So let's see what we're getting. So I'm starting to see some of these cracks in here. Uh, but here, let's try this. Let's set this value to three. OK, so now we can start to see these cracks, maybe Four, it just comes, you know, just playing around with it. If I look at the noise parameters, I could also adjust scale, but here I have this hardness value. Right now, these guys are sharp, gets kind of aliased. So I'm just going to drop this hardness value down, just m blurs them a little bit, makes it a little bit of a softer uh, overall kind of look and feel to this. Okay, so this is the mask. Let's hit M on the keyboard to go to my material mode. And now we can see the effect happening. OK, so now it's just time to, you know, tweak and dial this in. So we'll select the layer. Let's play around with the overall height, height intensity. So I'm going to crank this up a little bit, maybe a little too much, just so we can make sure we're seeing this in the video. And then we'll come back over to our mask. We can play with the, the blur. So I might want to pull this in a little bit, maybe jump over here to this levels and, and tweak this some as well. So again, it's just playing around. This the the actual mid value here, this grayscale is really going to help control that overall kind of fall off. So there I like this little uh, hard edge I'm getting right here and then I'm just adjusting that little fall off. It's kind of like the slope transition here to that shape up. Um, OK, that looks pretty good. OK, and then maybe go back to my blur and increase it a little bit just so we can see a little bit more of this. OK, and I think that is going to do it here for this edge bubbling. Uh, again, just play around with that height input. OK, looks pretty good. All right. So there there you have the entire effect. So we have five layers uh, and, you know, several effects here driving different masks. But the, the cool thing about it is we have one single input to drive everything. So now I can select my brush and with the paint here input selected, I can start to go in and just paint a uh, new rust information. What's also really cool about this, we're painting on the mask so you can toggle the actual grayscale value of the brush by just tapping the X key. So here I'll tap the X key and then I can go in and actually just mask out some of this effect. So it's really quick to paint the effect, hit X, mask it back out. Works really well when you're using a different alpha. So here I'm going to hit X and invert my mask value and then just paint out some of this effect here and you can get some really cool looks to your effect by just changing the grayscale value for the mask input as well as swapping out different alphas now to close things out let's create a smart material out of this effect so here in my layer stack i'm going to create a new folder and i'll just call this rest effect and let's just select all of our layers drag and drop them into the folder now, if you want this effect to overlay different layers below it, so one of the things I'm going to do here is if I just right click my actual layer group and there's an option here for blending options, I just want to set apply blending mode to all channels. It's getting cut off there in the screen capture. Let me just move it over and let's see if that works. Uh, there we go. Apply blending mode to all channels. And since the blending mode was normal, you can see that even if I switch this over to height, the blending mode is still going to be normal. That's great because it's now going to overwrite any of the layers below it. So I have that set up. The last thing I would do is come over here to my paint here input. Let's get rid of it and let's just create a new one that's blank, doesn't have any strokes. Drag it towards the bottom select paint here usually when i have a layer that receives a paint input i like to give this a, a colored label so i'll select the layer right click i usually make it green and then i can right click here and then choose to create a smart material so now i have the smart material let's take a look at this we can just simply drag and drop it right into our layer stack you drop over here to your green label layer, select paint here, and now I can go in and paint my effect and it's ready to go, ready to be used in any new project that you have. 
So here I have the final project that you can download. The project link is in the description of this video and I'll go ahead and just paint a stroke. And here you can see that I'm compositing my effect over top of just a metal surface. Now, one thing I wanna bring up really quickly in terms of adding this effect over top of another material is that you do want to make sure that on each of your layers, you go in and you add a metal channel. I did forget to do that in the video. So for example, here you can see where I have the rust smear and once I add the metal channel, that is looking correct. We're no longer bleeding that metal all the way through. So for example, I did go back and do that for some of my layers like the inside streaks. I wanna make sure I add just the metal here. I have my rust. You can see that I've added a metal channel because rust is an oxidized layer of our metal. We wanna make sure that that metal is set here to zero. So I've done it on the rust, the rust edges. You can see here another metal channel. Same thing here with my bubbling. Now, in case of the bubbling where some of the, you know, I'm just seeing some of the metal blending with some of the roughness, I did just set this to around the halfway point for my metallic value. As I mentioned, you can download this project. The link is in the description of this video, and this project does contain that fixed slope blur filter. So that's going to close out this video. As you can see, using Substance Painter to create complex effects is uh, pretty straightforward and you can create some really nice kind of procedural setups to your layer stack. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next time.